Hello and welcome, it's Jennifer, and today I have a video for you all about slimline cards. Slimline cards are very popular right now. They are the long and narrow card size, and there are many unique things that you can do with this card size, and I'll share some of those with you today. Now, I know slimline isn't a favorite of some. Some people haven't even tried making them yet, but I assure you that there are some techniques today that would work for traditional card sizes too. I will say, however, if you've never made a slimline card, I encourage you to do so for a couple reasons. First, sometimes creating something on a different size canvas can really kind of kickstart your creativity and getting you think of new, thinking of new ideas. A second reason, we all have letter size envelopes at home that work with slimline and it doesn't require any extra postage. Let's first talk about slimline cards and the different sizes. I know uh, a lot of people make different size slimline cards, so I get a lot of questions. So I'm giving you the rundown here. But remember, anything that fits in a letter size envelope would be fine. There are no laws to what size you need to do. Let's first talk about the envelopes that you can use. The slimline envelope size that I use the most, and I know many crafters do, is four and an eighth by nine and a half. This is a typical letter size envelope that you see bills being mailed in, and it's often referred to as size 10. Now the slimline envelopes that I use the most, these with the side flap there, I do have linked to a source below, and they come in lots of beautiful colors. But if you have a letter size envelope at home, you could definitely use that. No extra postage required if it's not too thick. Now for this size, any card that is four inches by nine inches or smaller will fit in beautifully. So that's what I traditionally do. Uh, so I wanted to be sure to share that option first. Now a traditional slimline envelope is the size of the yellow that you see here. It is three and seven eighths by eight and seven eighths and is called a size nine. Here you can see in comparison to the big slimline envelope that I just showed you that I usually use. I don't have any of the slim line envelopes this size. I did just find a source and I'll link that below. So I ordered some, but this yellow cardstock is cut to that slim line envelope size. Now the traditional slim line card you would put in there is three and five eighths by eight and five eighths. But I find those measurements a little cumbersome to work with. So I like sticking with that basic four by nine size. Okay, there is a third slimline envelope that people are talking about lately, and that's a small one you see here. This is a mini slimline envelope. Now this is what my mom used to send letters in. It's a little bit smaller, it's good for a folded letter, but it is three and five eighths by six and a half. And the card you would make for that is three and a half by six. I'll show you all the card sizes later. I will link to these envelopes below also. If you're scared to try a slimline long big card, maybe try a mini. It might be a good step in the direction of going to a full slimline. Okay, now let's talk about the note card sizes that go with those envelopes. The traditional slimline size is three and five eighths by eight and five eighths. And I put the measurements there on how to make one. Now this is kind of an awkward size. So many people round this to three and a half by eight and a half, and that works just fine. It still fits in the same envelope. I round up to four by nine. It really doesn't matter, just as long as it fits in whatever envelope you have. So this is what many of the dies and stamps and stencils that companies are designing for. They've designed for this size. However, you could definitely mat that on a bigger card size if you want. Here's how it fits into a traditional slimline uh, envelope. But again, I like to use those bigger envelopes so I have some wiggle room and also so that I can have elements hang off the side of my card. I love to do that. So if I have a smaller card and in a bigger envelope, I have some room for that. Now, as I mentioned, that's kind of an awkward size to measure and score and cut. So this is what most people round it to. Most people round their slimline to three and a half by eight and a half. That's why I call it a popular slimline size. It's easy to do. You just cut your paper to eight and a half by seven and score it down the middle. So this is what you'll see many crafters in videos do. I have a few different cards I've done this size, but again, I usually go for the four by nine and then cut it down if I decide to. So this is how this fits into the traditional slimline envelope. That's the envelope size in the back there and how it fits into the larger slimline that I use the most. So you can see there's plenty of wiggle room there. 
Okay, then we have what I call the big slimline note card size, the one that I mentioned that I like, which is four by nine. Super easy to create. You just cut cardstock to eight by nine and score it down the middle. You can see it is a bit bigger than the traditional size slimline note card, but it still fits into the letter size envelope. So I like having that bigger and easy to measure option. And again, you do not need any extra postage in the US for mailing the size envelope because again, it's just a letter size envelope. You would need extra postage if your card was super thick with embellishments as always though. So in the end, there are two slimline sizes that I like to use the most and many crafters do and that is four by nine or three and a half by eight and a half. The, the four by nine is a bit bigger than traditional and the three and a half by eight and a half is a little bit smaller, but they're easier to measure. So I find it best to do it that way. And finally, we have that mini slim line that's becoming a little more popular now. I haven't done a video with the size, but I do plan to. It's three and a half by six inches and it fits in the envelope that I showed you earlier. And you can do this easy by creating a piece of cardstock that is seven by six and scoring it down the middle. Here it is in comparison to a slimline card. You can see it's much shorter, but keep in mind, you don't need a special envelope for a mini slimline. You could just alter the regular slimline envelope, cut off a little bit at the end and retape the bot that end shut and you have a smaller envelope. No need to buy anything special if you don't want to, but there is the mini slimline envelope and it fits in it perfect. So I do link below to the different envelope options if you're looking for them, but again, Use your letter size envelopes if you have some because we all get to pay those bills, don't we? So I will mostly be using the four by nine size today, but sometimes you'll see me trim it down, but that's usually the size I start with. And then I can cut it down if I want to or if I wanted to make room for elements to hang off. I will say that all of the envelopes that I use for slimline cards are the big slimline cards that I showed you at the beginning of this video. And I'll link below to many different colors of that option. Okay, let's get started with some techniques. I know that many folks, including myself, have done slimline card videos with just a traditional folded card in the slimline size. But today I wanted to show you that you can get creative with the slimline cards. You can make tri-fold, gate-fold, bridge cards, lots of things. And I have several examples to show you. Let's get started with a basic tri-fold card design. I thought it would be good to show this so you can see what measurements work well for this. I also have some fun techniques and some cool new products meant for slimline cards. Okay, so this is a new stamp set from Pink Fresh Studio called Floral Notes. You can see it is a narrow and long set, perfect for slimline. What's really brilliant about this stamp set is you can also get the coordinating stencils. There are three layering stencils that make it easy to add color to the flowers in this image. You can use the stencils on their own or with the stamp or the stamp on its own. And there's also a coordinating die available. Off screen, I stamped that floral image twice with a dark gray ink from Pink Fresh Studios. I'll be using their inks today because the colors are just beautiful. So I'm lining up the first layering stencil with the flower and I'm applying some pink ink over this. I'm using a blending tool from Altenew. You could use any blending tool that you want. I kind of choose a blending tool based on the size I'm filling. So this is a pretty small image. So I'm using a small blending tool. You could use whatever you have. So you can see it's very easy to apply the ink heavier in the center and lighter on the edge, creating kind of a variation. That would be time consuming for me to do if I was coloring this with markers. So I find the stencils to be very helpful to me in creating cards quickly, adding color quickly. I also like that you can add things to it like a glitter paste over it, or you can press Versamark over this and then clear heat emboss. Stencils have a lot of opportunities to be creative. You'll also notice that I'm masking some of the openings off so that I can do a different color for each of the flowers along the stencil. I will then move the stencil over and do the same inking on the other floral arrangement. Then we can move on to the second stencil in the layering set. It doesn't matter which order you go in. One tip that I wanted to give you with this, when you are inking into small areas like this, I do recommend swirling your inking tool in both directions. That way you can get into the nooks and crannies up against the edge of the stencil openings a little bit better. 
If you want to apply your ink a little bit darker, you can always dab your inking tool instead of like moving it around. If you want to go lighter, first dab the excess ink off onto your work surface and then come to your paper and you can have a lighter hand and apply less ink. This really makes it possible for you to get different looks with only one ink color. So for this, I use one pink, one peach, and one yellow. And of course, I did the same thing to the other arrangement. Then we can come in with the third stencil. This does the leaf area. For this, I used one green ink, but I tried to apply the ink a little bit heavier in some areas and lighter in others, just to create a little bit of interest in the final image. Again, that would take me a long time to do with markers. And I did come in with a darker green to add a little more depth here and there. Okay, so once I was done coloring both of those, I have the coordinating die to cut that out. And then I will have two pieces that I could put on two cards or bundle together for one card. I like how fast and easy it was to color both of those. Next, let's create our note card. So again, this is a tri-fold card. And I decided to make it a little bit more narrow and you'll see why later. So I have created two note cards here. The final folded size is three and three quarter inches by nine inches for both of these. So I started with a piece of cardstock that is seven and a half inches by nine inches and I folded it down the center to create both of these. These two will fit together to create our trifold card design. So as I mentioned, I usually do four inches by nine inches. This time it's just a quarter of an inch narrower. And you'll see why in a moment. So these two are exactly the same, but I'm taking one of them right now to add some stenciling. This is the part that will show on the front of our card. For this, I'm using the new Pink Fresh Studio Double Chevron Layering Stencil Set. They've come out with a bunch of slim line sized layering stencils and regular stencils. These can be used on traditional cards too. These two stencils come together and you can see there are many different ways that you can layer them to create a stenciled background. I'm just using one of the options today. Here I have one of those note cards that I showed you once again. It's three and three quarter inches by nine. And I'm putting a pencil line at the halfway point. I'm doing this because I wanted to do a stenciling technique where the pattern looks like it's coming out from the center on each side. So I've taped down one of those chevron uh, stencils and I have the Rocky Slope ink from a Pink Fresh Studio. It's a light gray and I'm using a larger uh, Altenew ink blending tool. Now this is the same where it has the bristles. It's just bigger because I'm covering a bigger area. I like to use this. So I inked it up on one half of my card and now I'm moving the stencil to line it up with the pencil line to ink up the other half. I'm putting a light amount down here and I didn't want it to be too even. I wanted a little variation. So you'll see it's a little uneven here and there. I kind of like that look. It gives you um, a more playful look, I guess. It's not as perfect looking, which we're handmade, not Hallmark. So we don't want it to look perfect all the time. So there you can see the light inking that I have on the background here. I figured since my floral images were so bright and colorful, the gray would be fun in the background. Now I have the second in that layering stencil set. Many ways you could line this up, but what I decided to do was use it to create a thin line between our other thicker lines. So I taped that down and I'm taking the stencil that I used before and I'm covering up the part I already inked. That way I could block it off. As I mentioned with these layering stencils, there are many ways you can use them. Now I'm using an inking tool to apply a darker gray ink over this area and check out the results that you get. It's really cool. So be sure to try your layering stencils in different ways. You'll be surprised how many different ways you can use them. And then I, of course, will repeat that on the other half of the card. Okay, now for the floral arrangement on the front. When I was playing around with these, I noticed that these like kind of lock together really nicely to make a bigger arrangement. And it fits nicely across a slim line also. So this will go right across the front of the card. Now that we have all of our pieces ready, let's grab that other note card, the second one that we need for the trifold effect. What I like to do is put adhesive on the back of my main note card. This is the one that you saw me decorate. I've already added the flowers to it. Then I take my other note card and I put this inside of it. So I'm gluing the back in there and this forms a trifold card. Very easy to do. 
And sometimes it's fun to do something a little unexpected and different like this one. Okay, to finish off this card, I used two other stamp sets and I thought I'd show you a closer look at these while we're at it. This is the Pink Fresh Studio Incredibly Grateful stamp set. I use the Grateful for Your Kindness, but I wanted to show you that beautiful frame and the other sentiments included. This set does have a coordinating die set and it's really cool. The two dies are separate, so you can cut the just the outside or cut just the inside or do both. It's nice to have options if you're doing different types of window cards or shaker cards. Then there are also coordinating stencils for this, again layering stencils that allow you to quickly add color to this image. Now I actually have colored this piece, you can see it here, I just wanted to show you the end result to give you an idea of the detail color that you can get with these layering stencils. I didn't actually use this in today's video, but I'll save it for another video in the future. Okay, now the other uh, stamp set that I used to finish off this card is a sentiment from this one. This is the Pink Fresh You Are Amazing stamp set, and I'll lose, use this later in this video. But for this card, I just use a sentiment to stamp on the inside of my card. So here's a look at the completed card. I did mat my entire card on a piece of light gray cardstock that is about four inches by nine inches. You can see how I stamped a sentiment on the inside flap, but you could definitely do more flowers or stenciling there if you wanted to tie it into the inside. I also put glossy accents at the center of my flowers for some dimension and shine and added a few gemstones here and there to the background. So you can see how using these large stamped images that are meant for slimline cards fills a slimline very nicely, but you could definitely use these floral images on a regular card size too. Okay, my next card example is a gatefold card. And with this, I have a really fun way to make adding individual alphabet die cuts to your card a lot easier. Okay, for this card, I use the new Pink Fresh Studio Be Courageous stamp set. This is another large image that works great on a slimline card, but you could also stamp it kind of off center on a regular card. Again, there are layering stencils available to coordinate with it to quickly add color to the image and also a coordinating die that cuts out the center area. Now, I didn't use the die for today, but I definitely used the stencils, which saved me a lot of time in coloring this image. And by the way, the Pink Fresh Studio stamps and stencils are meant to go on a traditional slimline card design. So here you can see I'm holding a traditional slimline card behind the stamp and you can see how it goes right up to the edge. I like to leave a little trim and thus a bigger slimline card. Okay, so off screen I stamped that image onto white cardstock with black ink and now I'm lining up my first layering stencil. So this is for the leaves and I'm using a small blending brush and green ink and you can see how fast it is to apply that color. And I tried to do it a little darker in some areas and a little lighter in others. Okay, now it's time for the second stencil. This one has lots of flowers, and I thought it'd be fun to try to do the different flowers in different colors. This is when it's handy to have a smaller inking tool, so you can get into little nooks and crannies and do different areas of a stencil, different colors. This time I'm using the iCrafter blending brush. This actually comes with many brushes that stack together, so you can have a different one for each color, and it's great for getting into those tiny areas. But keep in mind, you don't need every type of ink blending tool out there. Maybe get a large and a small and work with that. I like to get all the different options and show them to you so you can see what might work best for you. Okay, so now I'm on the third layering stencil and check this out, a beautiful colorful image that took very little time. Next, I will use my trimmer to trim this down and it's time to create our gatefold card. Here's a look at what the gatefold would look like and how the card opens. Now my final card will be four inches by nine inches. Here's how you do a gatefold for that. You have a piece of cardstock that is nine inches tall and eight inches wide. And I'll score from two inches from each side. Now my scoreboard is small, so I gotta flip it and rotate it to be able to extend my score line across the whole piece. But this is just a nine inch by eight inch piece and I score two inches from each end. When I do this and fold along those lines, the two edges will meet in the middle, creating our gatefold. And you could definitely do this as a vertical or horizontal card. I decided to go with horizontal today. 
So the colored piece that I created earlier, I just cut in half right down the middle, and then I'm gluing it onto the flaps of my gatefold card. So you'll see how everything meets nicely in the middle. Okay, now it's time to add our sentiment, and I wanted to do die cut letters that spelled kindness. I discovered a new way to arrange my letters on my card, and this is really helpful. So first I use the Pink Fresh Studio uh, Alphabet Die. You can see the dies to the left. It cuts the letter and an outline of the letter, which you can see that example at the top. I only used the solid letter itself. I skipped the outline. And I die cut each letter twice and glued them together for some added dimension. Now I am putting all of these onto a sticky mat. It's the same sticky mat that I like to use in my Misty stamping tool if you've seen me do that in past videos. So I'm placing each of my letters onto the sticky mat. I'm not gluing them there, just placing them there. And it helps to hold them there as I come up with the placement that I want. Once I have all of my letters in place, I can transfer them onto my card. But another advantage of this clear sticky mat is I can hold it on front of my card and make sure I like what I have. Make sure I have the, the spacing just right and the orientation just right. It's really helpful to be able to do that. Now I'll take a piece of tape and put it over the top of the letters, kind of lining up with the cut line on our gatefold behind it. So I'll press that down and now I can lift the tape and all the letters with it. The reason I did on the halfway point is that way I can know that that's where I need to put my adhesive. I only want to glue these letters to the top portion of my card. So I'm only putting glue on the top portion of my letters. So really it's in the air, part of the letters that's behind the tape, as you can see here. Now I can pick up the tape and transfer it onto my card very easily. And the nice thing is, is the tape's on there and it'll hold all of those letters in place as they dry. So you can see how I line it up there, just press it down and give it a few minutes to dry. Once I'm done, I can carefully remove the tape and my letters will stay behind. To give it a little bit of shimmer, I added to Tonic Aqua Shimmer Pen. And notice I tape my card closed as I'm working just to keep everything flat. I also stamp Grateful for Your, which is from the stamp set that I showed you earlier for our last card. There you can see the shimmer, and I did add some pearls to the background. So this is another fun way to use the slimline card size, but in a creative gatefold. And the final uh, card size here is four inches by nine inches. Okay, let's do another gatefold, but this time the card opens sideways. I really like this version and I plan to do more like this, and I hope you'll give it a try too. It's really a fun and easy one to do. Now for the background on this, I use the new Pink Fresh Studio You Are Amazing stamp set. Once again, this stamp set is large enough for a slimline card and it has layering stencils available for it. So I've stamped the background with green ink and I'm using green inks for the three layering stencils. I want my background to be a little subtle, so I'll do a light amount of ink. Now I'm using a dark color, but what I do is I tap my blending brush onto the ink pad and then tap it off on scrap paper to get most of the heavy amount of ink off. Then I lightly brush onto my card. That way my green ink looks like a lighter color, but it is a dark color. That way you don't need as many colors when doing these. Now I'll do the same with the second stencil, but this time I'm using an olive color. So I'll use three different shades or colors of green for my stenciling. One of the reasons I really like using blending brushes is you can control the amount of color you put down. So you can do lighter if you want. And now we are with our third and final layer. I'm applying a, yet a different green to this. So I have different colors of green going on in the background, keeping it subtle and not distracting from the main focal point I'll put at the center later on. I did want to add something to this, so I'm putting that third stencil back on, and I'm adding some glimmer paste on top of it. I thought that would be a fun way to add a little texture, a little shine to the background, but not too much to distract. So I'm using my glitter paste and just spreading it out over the green ink that we just applied. And now I can remove this and give it a little bit of time to dry. And there you can see the beautiful sparkle that we have on some of our leaves now. Now if you look closely at our card, you'll see there is a dark green mat and then another green note card behind that. 
So I trimmed my inked and stenciled piece down and added it to a dark green cardstock piece that is three and three quarter inches by eight and three quarter inches. And then I cut that in half. This will go nicely on a four by nine card. Next, I have a piece of green cardstock that's a little lighter and that is cut to four by nine inches. This will be the base of our card. Now we need to create the two flaps that go with it. So I have two pieces of cardstock that are four inches by five and a half inches. And we're going to score both of these at four and a half inches. So basically I'm scoring one inch from one end of this piece. So I score that one and score the other one the same way. Then I will reinforce these fold lines. The reason we had to create these two flaps is I didn't have a piece of cardstock long enough to make one continuous piece. Okay, so I like to cut the little corners off this. I find the card goes better together if you do this, but you don't have to if you don't want to. Now we can assemble our three pieces together. So onto the folded flap of one of these, I'll put some strong double-sided adhesive. Any strong adhesive would work here. I'll remove the release paper and I'll wrap that over the end of that four inch by nine inch green piece. And I'll do the same on the other end. So our little flaps will be on the back of the card. We'll cover those up later. So now we take this one and we hold it along the other end and then wrap the flap to the back. And you can see how the two pieces meet in the middle. Now I have our inked pieces that we already matted with the dark cardstock. I'll glue one onto one flap and the other half onto the other flap and they meet in the middle also. Now there are those two flaps on the back. You could leave them as is, but I decided to cover them up. So I cut another piece of green cardstock that is four inches by nine inches and glued it to the back. Gives it a nice finished look and also it makes it a little bit stronger since it's such a long card. Now for the center of the card, I use the Pink Fresh Studio Merry and Bright frame stamp set and coordinating die set. I love the images in here and I love that the coordinating dies cut out the sentiments too, right up against the letters. So I die cut an oval from green cardstock and then I have the oval stamp. I'm using my sticky mat once again in my Misty stamping tool to hold the oval as I stamp on it. I stamped with Versamark ink and I'm adding sparkle embossing powder. This will be very subtle. It'll just make it a darker green wherever you stamped and add a little sparkle to it, which will go with that uh, glitter paste that we used on our background. I die cut two additional green ovals and glued them together so this would have some dimension. I then glued that onto a piece of white cardstock. When it's dry, I'll cut the extra off from around the oval and that way the center of our oval is white. It was just an easy way to fill it in. Okay, I also stamped Merry and Bright from the same stamp set with black ink on white cardstock. And I used the coordinating die to cut it out. This is the coordinating die that I was saying is nice because it cuts up to the letter. So you can add it on your card wherever you want. I end up gluing this right in the center of our white oval. Okay, I wanted some additional leaves to decorate my card just to embellish it. So I stamped that same You're, you Are Amazing background stamp with dark green ink on a darker green cardstock. And now I'm applying green ink over the stencil too. Now this, I just wanted to get the shapes of these leaves, so I didn't bother doing any of the others. But I inked it up pretty dark so they would stand out. I then wiped away the excess ink and then added some of the same glimmer paste once again. This will make my little leaves that I'll cut out very sparkly, which will match the background. So don't be afraid to do inking and then add glimmer paste on top. It's a great way to add some sparkle and you really don't need many colors of glimmer paste. Just put ink behind it. Okay, so after it dried, I'm cutting out some of those individual leaves as you see there. And then I can use those as embellishments on my oval. So I cut out, I think seven of the leaves and glued them onto the oval and also added some red pearls. The last step is to add this onto our card. But when I looked at the back of it, I noticed that my cutting of the white oval looked pretty bad. And you're gonna see it when you open up the card. So I die cut a white oval from the same die that I used to cut the green frame. And I glued that white oval around the back so it hides my poor cutting. That way it'll look good from the backside. Now things like this 
just take a little bit of time, but they make a big difference on the final card. So it's definitely worth the added effort. Okay, so now on this, I'm only putting adhesive on this one side of the oval. That way when I add it to my card, it's only glued to one of the flaps. If you put adhesive on the back of the whole thing, you'd glue your card shut and that wouldn't work out well. So now it's only glued to the left flap. And then I'll use my T-ruler because I want to make sure I get this straight. I tell you, the T-ruler saves the day in my craft room a lot because it always helps me to make sure things are centered and straight. I also added a piece of white cardstock to the inside for an area where you can write your personal message. So here is a closer look at the final card. You can see the shimmer on the background over our light green inking, and then the shimmer that we have on the leaves that we cut out to embellish our oval. So this kind of gatefold that opens to the sides is also a fun way to make your slimline cards even more interesting. Remember, I did specific card dimensions for you today, but you could make this whatever size you want. Anything smaller than four by nine will fit into that envelope, so the sky is a limit on what you create. Before I go, I wanted to show you a few more things. I showed you trifold and gatefold cards today. Another fun thing that you can do with a slim line size is a bridge card. I didn't have time to do it in today's video, but I have done this card in a video in the past, and I'll link to it here. So it is a traditional bridge card, but in a slim line size. Definitely something fun to try. Again, I'll link it here for you to check out. Before we go, I also wanted to show you a few of the other interesting products that Pinkfresh Studio came out with in this release. The reason is they are all designed to go with slimline cards, and that's what this video is all about, so I wanted to show you a few more of them. I'm not showing all of them, just a few, so be sure to check out the rest in my links below. But here we have a layering stencil that is Argyle. And watch as I change the different positions on this. You can see all the fun ways you can layer these together to get different looks. This is definitely my favorite of the layering sets, and I wish I would have had time to use it in today's video. Here's another. This is the simple plaid, and you can see there are many ways to arrange it. I think the reason I'm really excited about these layering stencils and also the stencils that coordinate with the stamps like I showed you earlier, the reason I'm excited about these stencils is because the price point of them is better than most craft products, uh, which is always a relief. And also you can use them in so many more ways. You can use things like glimmer paste on them. You can ink with them. You can make an impression on cardstock using your die cut machine. So I'll go through some more um, techniques that you can do with layering stencils in future videos. I really think it's a great addition to our craft collection. Okay, if you are interested in anything I talked about today, I do have them linked below in my YouTube description. And all those dimensions that I gave you earlier, I have it all written up on my blog, which I will link to here. And that way you can print it and save it at your craft desk if that helps. In the middle here, I have a couple other videos, including some slimline ideas. I thank you for watching. I hope you have a great week, and I'll see you again soon.